Oh look, I got the Wheel of Poverty. <gasps> I have been blessed. I have been blessed by the Gazoo. Mr. Snail has given me upon a very generous donation of 100,000 silver. You're fucking kidding me. Unbeknownst to me, War Thunder actually uninstalled itself, so, uh, well, I have to go find where the original files were found. Anyhow, it is what it is. Maybe Garjan is telling me to stop playing War Thunder for a little while. Anyway, we'll get into some gameplay in just a second. But, uh, I thought I'd ask, hey, how are guys going? What's going on? What are you playing? And if so, is there anything interesting going on? In the meantime, let's go jump into some gameplay. Utter sex machine. Yep. The, all, all the clothes come off when I tell my girlfriend I've spent hundred dollars on a, a couple of pixels. Whether or not your girlfriend likes you because you spent a hundred dollars on pixels in a video game, my 4.0 German lineup is quite spicy indeed. Let me just go over this one real quick. As you've seen, uh, there's the IL-2942 and the BF-109 E7U2 for the two aircraft. They carry bombs. You know, just fantastic aircraft overall. The pack premier, the SDKFZ 234-4. The German T-34 747R. The Panzerbefehlswagen Fear and oh my goodness, what the hell are those Radkampfwagens doing in the background? Look at them go! I think my hangar is a little bit broken. And I have a M4748A, which is the Hermann, the German Sherman, as well as the Finnish KV-1B. And oh, while the focus is going to be primarily on the KV-1B, because, well, this video was quite fascinating, I guess... You know, the focus is going to be basically on this ridiculous lineup. Now, I have no problems getting three, four kill games, five kill games, and there's an average just with this lineup alone. So, it's unbeknownst to me when my whole entire squad gets like seven to eight kills between themselves, uh, and I can't compete. Hell, Apex has a fantastic round this time. Uh, dressed in his fancy party hat with a wizard and a, a sprinkler effect on top of his tank there. But yeah, KV-1B is, is an extremely powerful vehicle. The German Sherman is an extremely powerful vehicle. The other vehicles in the lineup are equally good in their own line. The lineup itself costs quite a pretty penny. I'm not entirely sure what to think of it, honestly. Is it pay to win or is it just a case of collector's uh, revenge, I suppose? Because obviously this is low tier, so... The KV-1B is basically just something that can bounce absolutely everything aside from maybe the occasional 17-pounder. But you will have you know, bad luck against the vehicles that actually know what they're doing. But the KV-1B is a fantastic vehicle. I like the Panzer IV, which I'm driving right now, which is still a fantastic tank. I'm just terrible at playing tanks in general. More of a pilot personality of myself. But that doesn't necessarily matter. I've only got two aircraft left on long. The F-4E and the F-4C that predecedes it. And as you can see here, this tank, well, it's kind of exposed. Apex can sit there perfectly fine without risk of having anything happen to his particular vehicle because it's extremely up-armoured. Panzer IV on the other end, well, it is a late-war Panzer, but still, it doesn't necessarily, I guess, field enough sort of armour to really deflect or do any sort of meaningful thing. It is basically a, a sort of a long-range brawler, whereas the KV is extremely close in sort of uh, support vehicle, which at the same time can pack an offensive punch. I'm looking at Apex on the top of the leaderboard there already. He's just going ham on things. By the way, do you like my esports ready uh, KV-1B? I painted that on the sides because I thought, well, if you've got a hundred dollar tank, you may as well dress it up. And obviously I put Mike's decal on the front of the gun there. It's absolutely cursed. Good news is, I don't have to look at it when I'm driving it. Only the people who are looking at me do which it might actually highlight the fact that I get my gun damage a little more often than I probably should, because I've got a decal on the front. But hey, it is what it is. And suffice to say that this thing is incredibly KV-1-like. I don't normally like KV-1s, but this thing's got extra armor on top of an extra armor. It's a ZIS-5, but just, just so much more better. Now, the vehicle itself is a bud rating 4.0 in realistic battle, so it's introduced in update 1.41 and is possibly the second rarest vehicle in the game next to E100. However, since its introduction to the marketplace, I doubt that claim is exactly correct. There's quite a few of these perusing around. I can say there's a lot more German Shermans than there are KV-1Bs out, and that's because they sold 2,000 of them recently during uh, 2020. 
Moving on. Uh, the KV-1B is unique for the German tree. It's got a three-tone desert default camouflage, green and white and brown. And this is the Finnish armor camouflage during World War II. As the KV-1 uh, represents a one captured and being used by Finnish services. Regardless of not whether we'll get a proper Finnish tech tree in Sweden or any other nation is announced as, as, as to be seen, really. But again, it's it's got the same 76 F-32 gun, which is equivalent to the L-11 already in the early T-34. It does have APHEBC rounds with explosive filler, which are more than adequate to cripple things. And considering volumetric changes, this thing is kind of lethal, depending if you can actually get hits on things. And again, I'm not a tanker, but... The reason I'm featuring this clip is because what happens at the end of the video. More importantly, the armor on the KV-1B is brought up to its great amount, especially for its battle rating. You know, it's got additional 25mm plates and is different from the CS-5, which is already up-armored KV-1 as is. So, you're looking at a win-win combination, and this thing utterly stops. It is just... It's got the mobility of a medium tank, to be honest. And it sort of is a mixed bag due to its heavier weight, but it accelerates incredibly well. So regardless of where you shove this vehicle, unless you just plow it in a straight line, it does turn particularly poorly. Its mobility is severely lacking. However, if you just throw it in a straight line, this thing will go where it wants to go. Essentially, it's probably best to say that you know, it doesn't like obstacle or hills, right? Its reverse speed is quite average, and we're about to hit the point of the video where things start heating up a little. Now, I've crested this hill. I haven't really done anything much all this match, really. There is something down uh, in the water below me that I'm really quite interested about. There's an Italian tank destroyer. There's an ISU directly in front of me there. Don't know why I didn't put the shot on him, but he instantly hits the gas and then just stops right there. I was expecting him to push through. That's okay, though. This is where the bouncing starts happening. There's a Crusader to my left. Sorry, my right. I'm trying to take out that uh, that little Italian tank destroyer because those things are an utter pain. As you can see, the ISU is now going to have a go. Is he going to absolutely obliterate me? This is the scary vehicle. Nope, he only manages to take off my tracks because, well, this thing has extra 25mm armor on the hull, front and sides, and 30mm on the turrets. A very decent brawler and, and earns a decent silver line. And they haven't quite knocked out my gun just yet. So I'm just trying to wiggle a little bit and try and knock out this guy's gun because he's honestly a major threat to me right now. As you can see, he, he just kind of, kind of goes for a cliff dive. <laughs> I don't know what he was doing. I really don't know what he was doing. Crusader uh, completely just obliterated him earlier. But I would like to take out this guy. And we're just sitting here repairing. This is what this thing was designed for. Just abusing damage. We have like three vehicles trying to shoot us right now. And there's one to the left, which I haven't even considered, and I'm just watching out for the ISU. SU-152. It's those things. Just absolutely chunky bastards, those are. Yep, he bounced a second shell. And, oh look, there's an Italian P-40 beside me. Looks like he's trying to find a weak spot. They managed to catch me on fire, however, it's not quite over just yet. Doesn't necessarily matter, because this tank is essentially dead, but you can see what I mean by decent armor. If anything, I just ran out of footage and I couldn't really show you much. But anyway, it is what it is. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Bit short, bit lackluster, but hey, it's content, isn't it? Well, we'll have to see you in a video soon because, well, I need to actually go hunt out some footage for this game. And, well, I'm not exactly looking forward to that. I've sort of been putting War Thunder on a hiatus. I've got other projects I'm working on at the current time. So if you're interested in those kind of things, stay around to the channel. Make sure you check the videos because a lot of you don't actually watch any of my other content. Anyway, so much to say. My name is Ash, thank you very much for watching today's video, and I'll catch you in the next one, eh? Bye-bye.